Hi boys and girls, it's Mr. Wasserman again, and we are in the geography skills section of our Pearson My World uh, Social Studies text about Indiana history. We're on pages uh, IN 32 and 33, and right now I am on the page entitled Political Maps. Okay, now let me read this uh, first section of text for you. It says a map is a flat drawing of all or part of Earth. It shows a place from above. Here's the interesting part. Different kinds of maps show different information. That's the uh, key idea that I want you to take away from this video is that a map might be presented that shows you a place, but it might be giving you different kinds of information. Okay? Uh, one type of map that you can look at is what's called a political map. It says a map that shows boundaries for counties, states, or nations, as well as capital cities, is called a political map. This kind of map often shows major landforms and bodies of water to help locate places. But with a political map, it's more about where people have decided where things are and where things aren't. Okay? Uh, Indiana has some interesting parts to it, some interesting shapes. Specifically, down at the bottom half of the state where... The border is made up by large rivers, one of which is the Ohio River. And then over here at the top of my state uh, map, there's a little dip in uh, the state because of uh, Lake Michigan. That makes up part of our northwest border. But the rest of the border, the rest of Indiana, is largely just a straight line. Here, here, and here. And that's because... These lines are political borders. They, they don't physically exist in the world. It's just that when, when uh, people uh, were first deciding where to establish boundaries for states, if there wasn't a, a very obvious uh, physical boundary like a lake or a river or maybe, say, a mountain range, uh, they just drew a, a line. They just drew a line and said, this side is Indiana, and let's say this side is Ohio. Okay. Now, as you get further west, you're, you're going to notice that the state borders get a lot more geometric in shape. Uh, this area in particular, right here, uh, this is the uh, shared border of Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. And this particular spot right here where these four states intersect is called the Four Corners Monument. Now, uh, I snagged a picture off of the internet. It looks like uh, some vacationers. Family snapshot. And you can see that this, uh, what I'm guessing is a husband and wife couple, the, uh, the missus is standing in the Colorado side, whereas the husband is straddling uh, what is Arizona and I'm guessing uh, Utah. Okay, so as you can see, these lines are just imaginary. Somebody on a, uh, uh, looking at a map drew them, and then that's where they decided one state starts and another state stops. Okay, so political maps show us political boundaries and political things. Now, we also have something called a physical map. A physical map shows us physical features okay now some states like indiana have to show us certain physical features like uh the bottom of our state which is uh, gnarly because of the ohio river but a physical map shows landforms such as mountains plains and deserts and it also shows bodies of water such as oceans lakes and rivers physical maps often show borders between states and countries to help locate these landforms okay so what we're seeing here is a physical map of the Midwest. It's the same uh, area as our political map. It just gives us different details, whereas this map shows us uh, the capital cities, like Indianapolis. The physical map that's alongside it on page 33 shows us things like where some of the major rivers are. Uh, or mountain ranges. Like up here at the top of Minnesota, it shows us the Masabi Range. 
Uh, that's a range of mountains that you can find in this area of the country. Okay? You'll even notice that the coloration of the states is a little different. It looks kind of like crumpled paper. That's because they're trying to show you a topographical uh, layout of our, uh, our Midwest region, basically showing where uh, places are higher or lower than others. I've attached a topographical map of Indiana, which goes into a little bit more detail. Down here at the bottom, we have a key... Uh, and that key shows us that if it's dark green over on this side of the scale, it's going to be at or below sea level. But the higher it gets, the more it goes from green to yellow to orange to this darkish red. So if you're seeing something that's really dark red, that means that it's a high elevation hills and mountains. We don't really have any mountains in Indiana. Most of the the darkest color is kind of in this range right here, this kind of like a, a brownish orange. But you'll notice that on this side of the state, the eastern side, is a lot more hilly and higher elevation than this side of the state. That's largely because of the, uh, the glacier uh, activity that happened millions of years ago uh, that helped shape uh, both Indiana and the rest of this region, which we'll get into a little bit later as we explore Chapter 1. So a physical map shows you physical features. A political map shows you political features. Most maps that you see are going to have a, a, a mixture of both. This topographical map still shows you things like names of certain cities, like Indianapolis over here in the center, South Bend, Evansville. Um, but it's more about the physical features than it is the cities, because there are a lot more uh, cities in Indiana than just the eight or nine that they listed right here. So that's the difference between political and physical maps. So as you continue to read, please consider how all maps have something to tell us, but it doesn't always mean they're going to tell us the exact same thing, okay? Please take a moment to uh, complete the embedded activities, answer the questions within. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, we will talk again soon. Thank you.